Greetings, everybody. Let's take our first look at absolute and conditional convergence. So in this problem, we're asked to determine whether the series converges absolutely or converges conditionally or whether it diverges. And to really understand this problem, we probably need to know what the definitions really are for absolute and conditional convergence. So probably the best place is to start with a couple of definitions. So if we're given a series, and that series has terms, a sub n, then we say that the series, the series converges absolutely If and only if, so if and only if, we take the new series where in this new series we're taking the absolute value of the terms in our old series. So if this new series converges, then that's our condition for saying that our original series converges absolutely. So by that same token, we also have a definition that if the series converges, so if the series n equals 1 up to infinity of a sub n converges, but it does not converge absolutely, Then we say that the series converges conditionally. So we know that the series does converge for some in some by some particular test, but if we take the absolute values of the terms, that series diverges, then we have a series that converges conditionally. So with those two particular definitions, now we're kind of ready to jump in and try to solve this problem. So the first thing that we might do is to take the absolute value of the series to see what we have. So if we've got a minus 1 to the n over 13n plus 15, then we take the absolute value of the terms of those, then all that's actually going to happen in that case is that we're just going to knock out the minus 1 to the n. So we really end up with a series 1 over 13n plus 15. Now, kind of from our previous experience, if we take a look at the terms of that series, well, we might say that those things, as n gets really, really large, those things really start to look like 1 over 13n, which is really kind of just our series 1 over n. And so in that case, we, knew we, we know we have a harmonic series, and so probably this thing is going to diverge. And if we really wanted to show that, what we would then turn to is most likely the limit comparison test. So let's do that and let's see what happens. So then just to review the limit comparison test, it's not a bad thing to do. We're really imagining that we have two kinds of two particular series. So one series that has terms a sub n that really has kind of an unknown behavior. And then we've got some other series that we want to compare that one to. And we'll say that those have terms b sub n, and this one has some kind of known behavior. So we know for certain that our series b sub n does converge, or we know that it does diverge. And so what does the limit comparison test say? If we do the limit as n goes off to infinity of a sub n over b sub n, if that 
converges to some value L that's not zero. So what that really means, kind of in perspective, is that our series, our terms A sub n and B sub n are both going to zero, and so they're going to zero at the same rate. And since they're going to zero at the same rate, they have to compromise and go somewhere in between zero and infinity. So we get a value L. And so the conclusion of that is that whenever this happens and they're going to zero at the same rate, then they both are going to have the same kind of behavior to them. Either they are both going to converge or they're both going to diverge. Now by that same token, if we do the limit and our limit is z, then that's telling us that our numerators, our a sub n's, are actually going to zero faster than our b sub n's. Now, in that case, what it means is that if our b sub n's converge, then because the values of our a sub n's are actually going to be less than our b sub n's over time, then the b sub n's in turn force our a sub n's into convergence. They don't allow them to become unbounded or to um, go to zero so slowly that our series end up diverging. And so in this case, we know that we can use the, in, we can infer that the convergence of the b sub n's give us convergence of the a sub n's. And then finally, kind of our last case, our a sub n over b sub n's, if those head up to infinity. So now we're telling us that our b sub n's are heading to zero, but they're heading to zero faster than our numerator's a sub n's. And so in that case, what's happening, if we know that our b sub n's are diverging, our a sub n's are going to be larger than our b sub n's in that case. And so what happens over time, the b sub n's don't go to zero fast enough since the a sub n's are bigger. Those sequences of partial sums have to be bigger as well. And so the divergence of the b sub n's inf gives us the divergence of the a sub n's. And so kind of applying that in this case, let's see what happens if we compare the terms of the absolute values of our series um, that we were given with our harmonic series. So we have the limit as n goes off to infinity of our 1 over 13n plus 15 and our harmonic series terms 1 over n. So if we rewrite this one a little bit, we know we end up with n over 13n plus 15, which what happens in that case, because the degree of the numerator matches the degree of the denominator, we end up at just the ratio of the leading coefficients, or namely 1 over 13. And so for this one, we are not going to zero, we're not going to infinity, and so we that tells us that our terms are going to zero at the same rate, and so convergence, they will have similar behavior. And since our b sub n's converge, since the harmonic series diverges, then we know that our original series diverges. So that our series 1 over 13n plus 15 for n going from 1 up to infinity diverges. Okay, so now at this case, we know we do not have absolute convergence. So we do not have absolute convergence. So we know we don't have absolute convergence, but do we have conditional convergence? Well, looking at the series itself, we know that this thing, n equals 1 up to infinity, the minus 1 to the n is then telling us that we've got an alternating series. And so we would then check to see, maybe using the alternating series test, does this converge? So let's take a look at what the alternating series test says. So according to the alternating series, we just have a couple of conditions that we need to check. First of all, that the terms of our series 
So if we just look at the, the positive values of the terms of our series, that those are decreasing. Our second condition is that if we check the limit as n goes off to infinity, those terms go to zero. So let's take a look at that and see what happens. So kind of starting off, we know we have n less than or equal to n plus 1. And so if we multiply both sides by 13, that also remains true. And then if we go ahead and add 15 onto both sides, we still have the same inequality. 13 and plus 1 plus 15. And so now, once again, because um, our function 1 over x is decreasing, whenever x is going to be positive, that tells us that if we take the reciprocal of both sides, our direction, the direction of our inequality switches. And so we have 13n plus 15 is now greater than or equal to 1 over 13 times n plus 1 plus 15. But this is really what we mean when we're saying that b sub n is greater than or equal to b sub n plus 1, and those are always going to be positive. And so that tells us that our first condition of our alternating series test is satisfied. For the last condition, it's almost trivial to see that if we take the limit of the b sub n's as n goes off to infinity, now, we're really just taking the limit of 13n plus 15 in the denominator, which quite trivially gives us 0. And so our second condition is also satisfied, and therefore the series converges minus 1 to the n over 13n plus 15 converges. And so we know that we have conditional convergence. And so in this case, our final answer then is that the series converges conditionally. So I hope you've enjoyed this, and I will see you guys in the next example.